The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 is the market leader and the best foldable phone you can buy. Or is it? Foldable smartphones are still trying to find their footing in the modern market. For one, the tech is still new and very, very expensive. Secondly, they can be thick and heavy and their form factor is kind of awkward to use. Oh, what's this? This Jimmy is the Oppo Find N2, a slightly different take on the book-like foldable that can actually be cheaper than the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Currently sold in China for the equivalent of about $1200. And let me make this clear, it is in no way a knockoff. In fact, in some aspects, it's better than the Fold 4. Okay, let's start with the overall shape. When we have both phones closed, both are about equally thick, but there is a noticeable wedge on the Z Fold 4. The Oppo Find N2 is also smaller and the external screen is wider, so using this one folded is more comfortable as it feels more like a normal smartphone. It's also slightly lighter. And that gap in the middle, which the Z Fold series can't seem to get rid of, is non-existent on the Find N2. The build quality looks and feels great and the hinge is solid as you open and close it. In fact, as I pry open the Z Fold 4, it's a bit harder and there's also a small creak and crackle to it. Whereas the Find N2 is easier and quicker and still has a bit of a creak. Now, when we open them, both phones will have a crease in the middle. Again, Oppo's hinge here seems to be able to hold the screen up better and the crease is shallower and much less noticeable. However, when it comes to actual display size inside, Samsung wins. See, having a wider external screen for the Find N2 is well and good and awesome. Uh, however, this means that on the inside we get an almost square aspect ratio, which means that when watching 16x9 video or 21x9 video, the Find N2 actually has to waste more room with black bars and we get less picture on our screen. As for actual image quality, I absolutely cannot complain with either of those screens. Both have color profiles to pick from that either let you push the OLED colors to aggressive saturation or warm realism. Both have eye comfort modes which will adjust screen temperature based on the ambient lighting. But I also can't go on without saying that Samsung does have the Wacom digitizer underneath its main screen. This allows us to use the S Pen with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. If you've never used one, you probably don't care. If you have used one, you probably know it's an amazing way of taking handwritten notes on your phone, an art that we slowly forget. Okay, so far we have pros and cons. The Oppo has a better external screen, one might argue for usage. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 wins when you open it up and you get that huge canvas. And a canvas it is with the stylus support. It's give and take, but one thing I would like to add, that Oppo hinge feels a bit too good to be true, so I would be keeping an eye on its durability over time. I'm not spelling doom and gloom here, I'm just curious to know how this experimental hardware will deal over time. The Oppo Find N2 runs Color OS 13 based on Android 13, whereas the Galaxy Z Fold 4 runs the well-known One UI 5 on Android 13. Now, for some reason, there's an anti-color OS sentiment in the tech world. I think it comes from the fact that OnePlus 10 users almost had color OS pushed on them as color OS was going to merge with the OnePlus Oxygen OS. Since color OS is highly feature rich, users were worried that they would be robbed of the vanilla Android feel of the OnePlus and that's where the hate started. Or so I think, when it comes to color OS, I actually like it a lot. I've been using Oppo phones since the Oppo Find X3 and I like the animations, the snappiness, the responsiveness, the many, many small details that make the whole experience. For example, here's a favorite feature of mine. If you want to use the phone one-handed and need to reach an app icon that's way on the other side of the screen, just do a small swipe gesture along the edge and all apps will gather towards your thumb. Multitasking gestures are also here, no doubt inspired by Samsung, but all of them have Oppo's own spin. If you want to go into split screen, you swipe with two fingers from the top and it gives you this super satisfying UI. And if you want to open an app in a floating window, just 
pull it way up. I dare argue that this is an easier way to do this, while on the Samsung you have to fiddle with that diagonal swipe gesture that still feels like it's just out of beta. No, no, let me pull back a little, I'm not bad mouthing the Galaxy. I spent months with the Z Fold 4 and outlined all of my positive and not so positive thoughts in my last video with this phone. I just want to make it a point that Oppo's Color OS is not as bad as some online comments make it out to be and actually has a lot of thought put behind it. The new One UI does have that persistent dock in the bottom, which makes the Fold feel like an iPad or a mini desktop machine if you will, and it has DeX which allows you to hook up to a USB hub and create a makeshift desktop workstation from just your phone. So productivity score, one to Samsung. It's also interesting to note how the different softwares treat the external and internal screens of the foldable devices. The Samsung lets you customize icon layouts separately, basically treating the folded and unfolded mode as two separate workspaces. The Oppo takes a simpler approach. Since its external screen is exactly the half of its internal screen, an unfolded Oppo N2 will simply show you two pages of your home screen at once. It's nothing major, I just felt it interesting to point out the two different philosophies. Also on the subject of continuity, now both of these phones have this, when you start doing something on the external screen, you can unfold the phone and continue your work on the bigger canvas of the internal screen. However, if you do the opposite on the Z Fold 4, if you start something on the unfolded display and then close close it, the phone automatically goes into standby, save for a few apps. If you want to be able to continue your work when folding in for specific apps, for example, Google Maps, you have to actually premeditate that intention, go into settings and tell One UI which apps you want to work this way. The Oppo Color OS has this cool feature that's enabled by default. No matter what app you're using on the internal screen, once you fold the phone, you will have a brief period of time where you can just swipe up on the external screen and it will automatically light up and reopen that app. This is pretty cool and inventive, I dare say. When it comes to performance, both of these phones use the same Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor, which is basically the best CPU for Android phones for the second half of last year. Interestingly enough, the Oppo uses an Adreno 730 GPU, while the Galaxy has an Adreno 670. Nevertheless, in benchmarks, the Galaxy has slightly better scores, but the differences are largely negligible. In other words, both are top-tier phones with top-tier performance no worries. Interestingly, while the Find N2 is slightly smaller than the Galaxy Z Fold 4, it has a slightly larger battery. That's 4520 mAh on the Oppo versus 4400 on the Z Fold 4. Our battery tests show that the Find N2 can last slightly longer than the Z Fold 4, but I would also like to add that it's better at holding charge while in standby. Samsung phones are still a step behind the competition in standby as Galaxy phones drain a bit more charge while the screen is off for one reason or another. That said, both of these phones will take you through a day, a normal day even with heavy usage, but this one will have a bit more juice in the evening. In the camera department, I was pleasantly surprised by the Find N2, while Oppo's cameras before always had this contrasty over sharpened look. This one's an improvement. Compared to the Z Fold 4, the Samsung camera still wins with its warmer colors and more realistic detail. Also, the Fold has three lenses on the back, ultra-wide, wide, and three times telephoto. The Oppo only has the main wide camera and a two times telephoto for portraits. So it's in no way bad, but definitely a step behind the Galaxy. Okay, let's talk about leisure. Now, when it comes to multimedia, the Z Fold 4 has the edge here. As previously stated, you just get more use from the size of the internal screen, and that's the point. And then the speaker quality is better. The Z Fold 4 has more clarity to its sound, a wider sound stage, and better balance. That's not to say that the Find N2 speakers are bad. You can definitely use them as a makeshift Bluetooth speaker if you've got nothing else to listen to music on. But when compared side by side, we can notice that the Find N2 speakers sound a bit more mushy and lack the excellent clarity of the Z Fold 4's drivers. And now it's time to get to the part where the Oppo Find N2, despite its unique qualities, will lose to the Galaxy Z Fold 4 in the global market. 
and of course that's because of availability. Despite hopes that Oppo might launch its second gen foldable globally, there is no official word on that happening yet. The Find N2 is still sold in China only. And yes, of course, you can buy it from a third-party store online and import one. Enthusiast shops do exist and it's not a forbidden device or anything, but First of all, support will be next to non-existent, the stores will speculate with the pricing and you will get it with Chinese software. We do have Google Play services on this phone, so it's possible, but again, you have to be a bit adventurous in spirit. Oh, and speaking of support, I'm pretty sure it will be hard for Oppo to beat Samsung's promise, which is 4 years of Android updates, 5 years of security patches. This might get 2 Android updates. No promises there, no official word. But hey, maybe Oppo Find N3 in the future? I don't know. Would you grab this phone instead of a Samsung foldable if it were available to you? Let us know below. Thanks for checking out this video comparison. Subscribe for more videos like this. The Galaxy S23 series are coming. So I'll see you next time. Pretty soon! Bye!